welcome on back to the channel here at the tree house this morning today we're going to be looking at a homemade trot line versus a store-bought what's better we're going to decide so in the last video if you guys missed it i was fishing for gills and sunfish uh, not only just for fun also to eat i had a nice plate of, of the big bluegill that i caught and the other ones i used for bait so I went out, I set five jugs, uh, I got, I lasted about two hours, I uh, had four, four or five baits just get taken, didn't, didn't catch any, and I just got a massive headache, and I just had to come in and basically take three days of just laying in bed. I had some real bad virus, I thought it was old Willis coming back there for a second. While I was shopping for some terminal tackle the other day, I just came across one of these cheapo trot lines. And I think this one was around $10, which in my mind is a pretty good deal, but it looks like there's some cheap components on here. So in this video, I'm gonna attempt to build a trot line. Damn it. So in today's video, I'm going to attempt to build one of these trot lines, see how it compares to the store-bought, and then we'll get a verdict on if it's worth it or not. Then on another video, we'll actually take it out. I've already built some jugs. We'll, we'll lay down the lines and do the whole program. Colonel Sanders. What's going on here? World War II, chickens. Anyway, before this just gets too crazy, um, don't forget to check out the new America series merch. We got the red, white, and blue toss jig. Um, we've also got the America clutch. Just some really cool all-American performance apparel and polos, hats, the whole nine uh, available. You can always use my code, LFG. Get 10% off your order at googlesquad.com. It's linked down below. Let's get to build. So here's the components that I'm using. I'm using the number 30 waxed bank line or tarred bank line. I'm using the 18 uh, tarred bank line. I'm using number three, three odd. I can't, I think it's three odd swivels. Um, I've also got some, some one aught swivels, some big ones. But I'm also sandwiching some beads on my drop swivels, uh, and you can find those at Hobby Lobby or whatever. I actually borrowed my daughter's. She just discovered that um, I'm using those, so we'll see how that goes. Um, I'm gonna put these back. You gonna put them back? All right. Mm -hmm. You put them right here. I'll take care of them. Cause you steal them. <sighs> Just, I'm just borrowing them. I was gonna get you some more though. What kind? What colors would you like? You want all sparkly, pretty colors, or do you want just pink, or what do you want? I just want these. You just want those same ones? Yeah. Okay, I'll get you a bunch more. I'm about a third of the way through making my line right now, so I'm just gonna show you guys uh, a couple of these rigging, so you can kind of understand how it's done but it's really simple, it's just time consuming. So if you're gonna do this at home, first thing you gotta do is check your state uh, regulations, maybe even some specific lake regulations on how many drops you can have on a line. So, some states are different with jugs and with trot lines and everything like that. I'm in Texas, in the state of Texas, your lines have to be, or your drops have to be three feet apart. I'm going ahead and I'm loading all the beads and all the swivels onto one end of the line. Bead, swivel, bead. So just load those on there in that order. However many you got, I think I'm doing 25. If you happen to have a yardstick, it's pretty handy for three foot regulations. Measuring this with the yardstick and then I'm just going a few inches beyond that. So that way I know that I'm legal. I'm making sure that I don't move my finger from that spot and then I'm gonna cut off some of this number 18 bank line here. So we'll cut off about six to eight inches there, and this is going to be our, our stop. So on the store-bought one that I have, they're using some sort of rubber bead. Um, you know, that, I'm sure that works pretty good. It's kind of like making a serving knot if you're into archery. Um, not the long, lengthy serving over the main line, but just like if you were putting a peep on with some serving um, or just to stop something from moving up and down the line, 
tying in some string silencers, whatever. I'm just doing it like that. Overhand knots, and you do top, bottom, top, bottom, and I end on the top. Tie it real tight, and burn the ends. Put my foot on one end so the trot line is not moving, and I just tighten up the other end by holding up my cheese. And I'm just tying an overhand knot tight on that line. And I'm going to come right back down and do that overhand knot again just on the bottom. And a little tip on this knot, it doesn't have to be perfect, but there's a certain way where you tie it going top to bottom uh, where you have to switch it up from the top one that you do. The lines just cross a different way. It makes it bulkier and doesn't really fit that well together. Just get that last finishing knot there. It's all tight. So snip the ends pretty close. Then when you're done it's going to look like this. And then I just take the lighter again just like you would in you know archery situation. Just take that lighter get it to kind of melt down almost until it is going into the knot itself and just take a take the flat side of the lighter or, you know back side of your knife or whatever and just mushroom that out or flatten it out right on top of the big main knot and a little tip on doing that you don't want to stomp it or stamp it immediately after you get done burning it, like light it, melt it, wait three to five seconds. So it, the tacky part, uh, when you melt that rope down, doesn't just stick to your lighter. Because then it's kind of stringy, you're, you'll pull it off, and you're not getting that, that mushroom effect. So when you're all done, it should be nice and clean, look like this. And then I'm just going bead, swivel bead, pull that up, and you're just going to repeat the process on the other side. You know, these knots I don't think are going to going to wear out, especially being, you know, melted and stamped down. Um, you might say, like, why even put the beads on there if it's going to stop the swivel from moving? It definitely will, but what you're going to run into, what I have discovered, is when you pull that swivel towards the knot and start to rotate it because the whole purpose of this is to have this go all the way around freely but if you don't have something like a bead uh, there then the swivel will actually catch uh, on the knot and then you're going to get line twists because you have to imagine the fish is going to pull one way or the other and even though that knot is pretty clean when you start to rotate it it's going to catch on that knot and then start twisting your line. That's what you don't want. So the beads are just a really cheap way to do it. You guys could probably find something uh, better. Maybe I'm wrong, but drop a comment. You're not going to hurt my feelings. So the main line is built now. I put uh, one-aught swivels on the ends. That gives me some options for rigging, whether I want to float it, have it down at the bottom. Uh, there's, there's different options with having those swivels on there. And good quality swivels, I might add. They're all black nickel coated. Uh, they're, you know, they're oversized basically. So I think those those are going to hold up much better than the store bought ones. And same thing with the hooks I got as well. These are black nickel coated, four aught O'Shaughnessy hooks. I've actually never used O'Shaughnessy hooks on a jug line or a trot line, but I've used circle hooks and like octopus style hooks. And I, I don't know, I just, I lose a lot of fish on them. So I wanted to try these O'Shaughnessy's and see how they do. The nice thing about a trot line is you can experiment pretty easily. I've got 25 hooks on this thing. So I can put different style hooks and see which ones hold up better, which ones are losing fish more and all that stuff. So the last part of our build here, we're putting the hooks on uh, our, our drops. So I'm using that, that number 18 is probably 180 pound uh, waxed bank line. So I want to try to keep these uh, around a foot or shorter in length. So just making up for the knots I'm going to tie, I'm going for like 15 inches. 
So the first thing I'm going to actually do is just tie an overhand knot close to one of the ends. And I'm going to cut that down. And then I'm going to just burn that down close to the knot. Mushroom it. Stamp it out. So now we've got just a knotted ball on the end. So I've normally done loop, loop knots in the past, but I want to try this system because there's less, uh, there's just less room for error basically on the fish twisting, twisting out of it. And I literally just discovered that the base of my knife is magnetic. Not even the whole, what is going on here? Okay. I thought the magnet was inside of here, but maybe it's just a slip of metal and I have no idea what's going on there. But anyway, so then I'm going to slip this on here with the hook point facing up. That just, it's kind of like that snell when it gets to the end. It just gives that little, little bit of uh, angled up trajectory. I could go ahead and snell the whole thing, um, but I think this will hold. Like maybe if I get like a 40, 50 pound catfish, it might pull that knot out, but I've been putting this on my bench vise, uh, pulling the string as hard as I can, and I've only had one that I thought might slip out, um, but the rest are, are holding up really good, so I don't think we'll have a problem. But if I do discover I have some missing hooks, when we take this out on the water, I will, I will snell these up. Which, by the way, all you guys bass fishing that know the snell knot for like flipping, uh, for tying on your straight shank, flipping hooks, and all that stuff, that is a different difficulty of not than snelling a uh, like a catfish line like this where your lines already cut you already have this open end right here you're not attached to a rod and reel it's very quick and easy but anyway I want to experiment try this little stop knot and see how it works other end I'm just tying a loop just make that little overhand doubled over overhand snug that up just gonna snug that up I'm gonna Cut it close again. The reason I'm cutting this down is because I don't want it to get caught through the eye of the swivel. I'm going to put it through. Man. So I've got the stop knot to the loop, and you can attach these and put them back on really quick. Something that would probably be another advantage if I wanted to go the extra mile is to make a quick, quick detach right here. That's another component you'd have to buy. Um, but you just slip this through the swivel feed that through and you're done and you can take these off every time keep your lines clean and good to go on the next trip so here's a look of the whole thing laid out I've got those uh, walnut swivels there at the ends then every three feet we've got our little beads and swivel are all locked in. My driveway is about a hundred feet long, just to give you guys an idea here. And then on the other end, we've got our swivel, just like on the other end, and this is going to be uh, the float. So this is going to be my my jug to set on the end. You can literally just use like a like a you know laundry detergent jug or milk jug or something like that if you want to. This is just a noodle. It's got some, uh, you know, some nice little features to it that I buy. This is like three or four bucks. Um, you've got a hole on the end so you can, you know, attach line. You've got a cleat down here that you could use to tie line off. I'm gonna try something a little different. We'll get into this on the next video. We're setting this out, but I'm experimenting with something I think will work on setting the jug at the exact depth that you want to fish. That's uh, fully adjustable. If I could do this over again, I would put a three-way swivel right here because what I'm going to do is put a, a snap swivel onto that uh, far, far in, that far eye, run the string to a weight. That's probably going to be about five foot. So this line is going to run five foot off the bottom. And then obviously the float is going to go on the other side of that. So it'd, it'd be better to have a three-way. Let's have a look at the old store-bought, shall we? It's not bad, honestly. I mean, it comes on this spool. It's wound nice and neat. Uh, this is that plasticky line, so it won't get balled up very easily. These are your hooks. I think we can all agree those are lesser hooks. 
uh, your string for your drops is it's literally string so it's it's unwaxed it's already cut up though and they're they're cut up in I think it was like 16 17 inch so final thoughts on these two with the homemade versus the store-bought I, I went and looked at the receipt this is $9.99 so you don't have your your hooks attached uh, you do have to do some rigging but this is pretty darn good for what you're getting and on the homemade one that I built it's about a $20 cost but I have some extras of things and I just kind of calculated the amount of string that I use but I'm going to recommend if you guys don't have any bank line and by the way I've been saying this wrong the entire video uh, this is number 36 so 1836 I would get both of these anyway if you guys like to do other outdoor things even just having these at the house there's a lot of things you can do with them uh, it's tarred bank line it's just great for a lot of stuff you got to do some little patchings you need to hang some things you need to you know you can make handles out of this stuff uh, obviously camping hiking backpacking all that, all that. Uh, this is fantastic stuff just to have around in the first place so I'll leave a link for these where you guys can pick that up in the description but this took me about six hours to build I'm obviously gonna be fond of it more because I made it I put my time and effort into it but you know is ten dollars worth it for a fully ready to go um, trot line yeah I think it is I look at it kind of like building your own arrows or hand tying your own jigs or something like that it's gonna be more expensive <clears throat> than for someone to mass produce it in quantity but you know you got the pride in the work you're gonna just you're gonna enjoy it more it's like that with with anything that you handcraft I also think it's good just to learn how to do this to build a trot line build a jug line just a basic outdoor skill just to know in case you ever really need it besides that guys this is a fun thing to do to catch fish it is a, it's a surprise you know you're setting out some traps basically and you get to see if any any animals show up in there and you get to eat the fish which are amazing I love catfish so next time we go out next video I'm gonna show you how I'm doing the float to float which I've never done I've done tree to tree before so that should be a, a fun experiment thank you guys for hanging out with me today here at the treehouse building some fishing gear if you guys want to see more or if you missed the last video subscribe to the channel um, smash the like button and let me know in the comments what you think is better building it at home for 20 bucks or just buying one for 10 bucks and just going with it godspeed god bless you in the great outdoors and i'll see you on the next one I can put a camera on you. I okay. Can't. Camera. Patience. Camera. If you uh, if you don't have it right now, you you will learn as a parent.